Hi, I'm Zach. And I'm Jules. And welcome to our brand new podcast from National Prison Radio, Life After Prison. And this is The Sit Down. Yes, in The Sit Down, we speak to people who have been to prison or whose lives have been affected by the criminal justice system. So today, this is our own sit down. Me and Zach wanted you guys to get to know us a little bit better. So that's what we're doing today. Yeah, understand us a bit more. You know, why, why, why do we do this, Jules? Why what? are we the hosts of Life After Prison? Why do we do this? So, well, I do this because um, I struggled when I got out of prison um, with quite a few different things. And I just think being able to open up and talk about how you're feeling and your situation and what you've been through is so important. And I guess that's why we're both here, really. Yeah. And obviously we've done time. Yes. <laughs> um, we've, done our, we've done our bid. So um, we can understand and relate. Yeah. So what did you go to prison for then, Jules? Okay. So my sentence was GBH. It was five years. So I served two and a half years inside. Okay. Zach? Okay, so for me, um, I've been to prison on three different occasions. Uh, f- uh, twice for robbery, once for drug charges. And I served just under nine years in total uh, on like combining all three stints. Um, and yeah, I feel it's important to like discuss the journey of prison, you know, before, during, after and how it affects you and things like that. And you didn't always explain how long. Nah, you know it is. I'll be real <laughs> with you. It's embarrassing sometimes. You're talking to, yeah, I've been to prison three times. It's a bit embarrassing, you know what I'm saying? But um, but I think it's important that... No, it's important now. to keep it real and to like show people that there is life after prison. You did really you know well I mean? with that, so well um, done. Thanks. How did you feel about talking? About prison? Yeah, um, about your experience. Good question. Very good question. Thanks. And it's one of the reasons why I really wanted to do this podcast because it's helped me a lot since I have started. Um, because when I first came out, I didn't talk about it really at all. Mm. Um, it was just hard to relate to people about it. So I didn't know how to, who to talk to or how to talk about it. So, and I couldn't relate. So I, I just kept majority. Of, I didn't, I didn't really tell people that I didn't know. Um, so yeah, what what about you? Do you do you normally talk about it? Have you spoken about it a lot? All right, cool. So you see, for me, I had because I had loads of like co defendants, loads of friends that had been inside. So it was kind of I had people to talk to about. It. You know, what I mean, we could we had people, I had people that I could relate to, and they understood. You know, you know how it is when someone has been there, they get it. So I had that. Luckily, that was good for me. I think, yeah, there was people that I have spoken to about it before that knew about being in prison themselves, but that wasn't very much. And if I did speak about it at times, it didn't feel right. It didn't feel like I was in a room full of people that understood or... Did you ever think think, um, that you'd end up in prison? Oh, no, the good questions. (laughs) No, no way uh, ever. No, I mean, it didn't even... It wouldn't have even crossed my mind that, oh, I'd, I'd go to prison. Um, no. What about you? Okay, so for me, it's a bit different because I didn't think, you know, one ever thinks, oh, yeah, I'm going to end up in prison. Yeah. But the way my life was heading at the time, like with, with my friends and the things that we were doing, um, it was like, oh, this could be an actual reality that you could end up in there. Okay, so you had... No, it was you like, had thoughts. Did you ever think they would actually be real? That's or, the difference. Or S- Yeah. So that's the difference now. Because one of our mates went to prison when we were like 15, 16. He, he got four months. He did two months. But that felt like, oh, he was away for a long time. You know, when you're young, that kind of seems long. Um, and then that, that hit, that re- the reality hit home that this could actually end up being a possibility. Um, but you never... You're never like, oh yeah, it's gonna happen. It's just like, oh, it could happen. I'm not gonna you know lie. I, mean? I never thought I'd ever go into prison. Mm. <clears throat> it was a massive shock. Um, I'm not saying that I did. I was like a super good girl my whole life, but 
I wasn't, I didn't think anything would end me up in prison, no. So it it was, yeah, it was a big shock. I know when we first met, I was surprised that you went to prison, yeah? Do you get that a lot? A lot. I mean, even now, even even now, up until now. So I didn't really speak about it that much for the first couple of years. Um, and I'm saying only recently, yeah, in the last six months mm. or so. When I do tell people, when I do speak to people, they're, they're shocked. They are. Some people aren't, which is a really nice feeling because I don't want to just be out here shocking everybody. <laughs> um, hey, do you know no, what I mean? It's, no, not, it, it's a good feeling because it, it, it <laughs> makes me feel like, oh, I don't look like I've been to prison, which That's good. is not, I, I guess it's a, it's more of a compliment than, I, I don't know, that. than not being one. What I tell people that, yeah. <laughs> But no, when I say like, though, I look like I've been in prison. Some people are like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, what do you mean? What so, was that supposed to be? So yeah, on one side it's, mm. you know, but uh, on the other side, it's kind of like, oh, like, it's still a, it's a thing of, you know, if you've been to prison, I don't you know. should be it's a just, certain way or. Y- yeah. yeah. Or like, you know, it's still so shocking. It's another reason why, you know, doing this is, is nice because it's being able to speak about it and certain things happen to certain people and it doesn't define you. Facts. <laughs> Say that again one more time. It doesn't define you. Yeah, I like that. Thank you. I like that. So in talking about, you know, serving time and whatnot, I want to know what it was like for you hearing your sentence and like the court process for you. Okay. So hearing my sentence, there's there was two stages really. Yes. So hearing my sentence, what I got, I know this might sound a little bit crazy, but that felt uh I was relieved okay so you knew like where you stood basically where I stood but that was just because I was facing like I could have been getting six to 12 years so because of the charge so hearing that I got five was a relief at the time but that was an after stage of me hearing you know after when I heard guilty that was just that was another story that was traumatic and I went through trial so a week-long trial and that was traumatic, pretty much for for me and my family. Quite full on, isn't it? Um, yeah, it was. It to be fair, when I was in the courtroom, I so for that week, a couple of those days, um, I like I couldn't eat. I wasn't. Mm. I wasn't. I wasn't really there. You know, it was a bit of a a blur. Um, but when I was waiting for the jury to say guilty or not guilty I couldn't I couldn't even look at them I had to look at one of my sisters in the courtroom um and just see her reaction and if her reaction was like this is bad then it was real and if her reaction was all right then I was all right and I just saw her face and it literally broke me I was like oh no this is all real Mm. they've just said guilty this is bad. It was it was awful. I'm not gonna lie. It was an awful experience. <laughs> I'm laughing, but it was awful. At least you can laugh about it now, right? Yeah. Um, okay. So, what was it like for you and your family hearing that? Okay, this has actually happened. I am going to prison. Um, and yeah, how did your family react? All right. So I was on tag leading up to like my trial. Um. So kind of new mate mm. big chance you're going to prison so it was just that we had a long trial that had a 10 week trial oh you went to trial as well 10 weeks it's probably a bit longer than that as well well you, did you have to go court for it was, 10 weeks it was 10 weeks because it started in january not every single day for 10 weeks yeah started no. apart from the weekends it started in january ended up in finished in march Wow. Long. Okay, so how was that for you? Long. Were you stressed? To, to be honest with you, yeah, I kind of, um, I kind of left it. What's the word I'm looking for? I kind of knew, uh, you know what, you're going to prison. So it was just like enjoy life before that happens. Yeah, but you're on trial. That's... Yeah, you're on trial, but like it's you all knew happening. The outcome. Everything's yeah, happening. Did you know how long you were gonna get? No. You'd, I knew it was going to be a significant sentence, but that this wasn't was the in my... Fir- this was the first To one. be honest with you, yeah, the first trial, yeah. yeah. So to be honest with you, I didn't... Uh, that wasn't important to me. And how, how old are you? Obviously it is, but I was 17. 17, yeah. But the important thing for me was, looking back, was 
just making sure that I I uh, enjoyed myself mm. and that I had enough memories to get me through the time that was going to come. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I kind of was like just living in the moment, trying to prep myself mentally. So that was like, so I felt, I, I feel you on that one when I had five weeks before sentencing. So after, you know, I got guilty, I kind of knew what I was facing. I, I said to myself, I was facing six to 12. So I said, if I get 12, I do six. I ha- I needed to know. You needed to prep yourself. Um, but wait, let me just wait. So you had five weeks. I had five weeks. In between conviction and sentence. Yeah. You didn't run away. <laughs> I'm joking. What, you didn't want to run away? Zach. I would have cut. No, I'm joking. I I'm needed joking. to. What was that I, like then, that five weeks? That I mean, a lot better than, so I was on bail for a year. So that whole year leading up to, mm. so I was 19, leading up to that, that was an awful year. The sending, uh, The trial was awful. After that, I know I got guilty, but it was like a, a weight was just lifted. It was like, I just needed to know what was going on. Facts. I understand hundred percent because there's times where I've been on remand now and your life can't move on. Mm. You're, you know what I mean? You don't know where you stand. This is how I felt watching people on remand. Like it broke me. I was so glad. I know I was just got five years sentence, but seeing people on remand and they, they might get let off or whatever. They're in prison you know, waiting to hear what yeah. what they had, and I think that's traumatic. I think the waiting, and you know, they're not they're not and, talking. And I get the relief bit because I was going every day from prison to court, <sighs> so that was long for weeks. That's long. You just want to get give me a sentence. That was for another trial. That was like eight weeks. Eight weeks. Yeah, that's a long time. Long, um, for people that know, they know how long it is. And if you don't know, can you imagine? putting your life into a bag every day for eight weeks at a time. Like you're living in a bag. Yeah. Like all your I stuff mean, that's what it's like forth. inside though, isn't it? When you're, if you're getting moved around and um, shipped around. Um, okay. So did you, did you make good memories in there? Did you make yeah. friends? Did you? So that's, uh, that's a good question. I made I made a few friends that I still talk to to this day. Yeah. Um, and surprisingly, I I don't know if this is surprising or this is going to sound a bit weird, but I've met some good people in there. Did you ever think you would? No. Nah. So you thought you're going in, you're not talking to anybody. Listen, at first you don't want to chat to anybody. Yeah. I didn't want to chat to no one. I'm saying that because I how how yeah, how I I'm dealt like, with it. Leave me alone. <laughs> you know, you just want to be left yeah. alone a bit. The face, like, mm, don't talk to me. Yeah, no, okay, so mine. yeah, the, no, so okay, I've been a couple of times, so it's different for me. First time, I just wanted to know what the crack was. How does this work? Who can I chat to that's going to break things down to me? Like after that, I said, ah, bruv, leave me alone. <laughs> I just want to like just find out what I'm doing. Um, Did you make your memories? Hundred percent. You yes. know, I, I can I'll give you one occasion. Yeah, Please. I was in the prison, and um, it the World Cup was going on. Yeah. So the prison gym organized a World Cup football tournament. Aww. Yeah. So every team had a country and we matched the country with the same groups as what was going on. And it was a knockout tournament. Sick. Like the, the whole, I've never seen. That is wicked. What good vibes around the whole prison. The whole prison. <laughs> good vibes. That you is can't so misbehave. Cool. So no that. one was on any misbehavior because then you couldn't play. See what winning the World Cup can do. Like literally. So <laughs> we got, my team got to the semi-finals. We were such a good oh. team. Like we were, and the team we met in the semis, we were tipped to go against each other for the finals. But there was a mad conspiracy and they changed how the format was and we ended up playing them in the semi-finals, yeah? So there was a moment where I think I gave away a goal. Like I did something dumb. I was playing as a centre-back defence and I did something dumb and gave away a goal. And then we were losing, then we came back and then it was just mad. So yeah, that was a good memory. That is a really good memory. Sick. Yeah, yeah. And I still chat to about three guys that were on my team. Yeah, Four actually. Nice. We're still cool. We meet up, some food. Yeah, that's nice. Keep each other on the right track. Yeah, to be fair, I didn't think that I would ever meet anyone inside. So when I first went in, I was 
just don't talk to me. Um, I stone think it was, a, it was, yeah, it was a defense. It Show was us like, your stone face, Jules. <laughs> my what? Your stone, stone face. face. Your don't talk to me face. What does I that look like? I can't because I can't. You did it a second ago. I know. And now I'm on. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Have I put you on the spot? Yeah. All right, cool. I'm not going to do it again. Right, don't do it. That's fine. Um, but yeah, I just, I think it was just my time to like zone out and it was a defense as well. I didn't know what it was going to be like. I didn't want. Why were you scared? When you said you don't want, didn't know what yeah. it was going to be like. So what? I was scared in a way of the unknown. I didn't know how, how it was going to be. I didn't know, you know, I didn't know whether I was, yeah, I didn't know whether I was, it was just going to be awful for me. And, you know, people didn't like me or didn't want to, of course I had that element of it. But I think the thing that overrided that was, was a, a, a defense of like, don't talk to me. It was me that was like, yeah, in a, in a certain way, what's the word? Not um, coping mechanism. Yeah, and it made me. It, it built me a resilience. Okay. It built me a, a strength that I didn't know I had. Um, but on the other side, I had the, I had moments of scare um, that I was scared as well. So it was two. So what did you think prison was like before you you went? In? I was I was scared before. Okay. So because I, I was like, oh, I'm going what to was prison. Your image oh God, I don't know. That you had? Um, Orange is the new black. I'm <laughs> <laughs> shows are available. Yeah, no, I'm um, no, but what? So you thought it was kind of like that? I had no idea. So I was just imaging what I've seen on TV, and you know, trying to put that in in my head, but then make it more real life. I don't know what okay. I was thinking, but then as soon as I got in, it changed, and I had yeah. to. I think I had to have the strength. I had to. I think what prison shows you is that you have no choice but to adapt. To yeah, it, like the situation, yeah, kind of thing, and in somewhere it gives you certain, yeah. you know, strength. Okay, yeah. so what about you? Were you scared? All right, so at any point, so watch this. So I the, also want to yeah, know. I also want to know. So you can answer this how you want. Yeah, were you scared before uh, going in, like when you was doing your thing, as you yeah. say, or inside, or both, or when? Okay, good question. There, there was a few. Yeah, so to like kind of. Put everything in there, yeah. Um, so on the on the on the van going to from court to prison, yeah. The first trip, um, there was someone in the in in the van as well that I knew from the outside. <laughs> like we were like associates. To be somewhere. fair, on yeah. my van as well, on one of my vans, yeah. someone I knew. I didn't. She she was from my area, and yeah. it's quite small. Like okay. we, didn't, we didn't really know, and we were talking about that area, and I was like, this is weird, like. How, happens. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. Go on. So similar to that, you, and I was like, he was like, ah, oh, what? It's your first time. I was like, yeah. He's like, ah, oh, don't worry, it's cool. <laughs> You'll be all right. But in my head, I'm just like, they're nice on the van, not, aren't they? Everyone's... No, but no, not really, because there not was some the other time. guys talking some stuff. But then after, I was in my head, I'm just like, you know, like you just got to build yourself up. I'm like, yeah, all right, cool. Anyone talks rubbish, you know? I've just got to like. So you were scared? A not, bit. not scared, but I was just like. Prepping, prepping yourself. Prepping myself. Yeah, yeah. But like, it was fine. Mm. In terms of, it weren't that scary. It's just the the, the hardest thing is being in the cell mm. for that long. That thing was the biggest shock to the system because obviously coming from freedom and, and that. Yeah. Um, but there has been scary moments. And the scary moments for me are, oh, what's my life like going to be like after this? What if I lose someone in my family during my time inside? You know, them kind of things. How am I going to get my life back on track? Is this what it is now for me? Does that make sense? Those are like the scary things for me. And anything other, other than that, like getting into fights or what? I don't want no trouble. What about with your life like before you went inside? In terms of in general, what was scary? Yeah, and what was it like? Boy. But yeah, but scary. Yeah. So uh, do you mean before the first time or in general, like all the times? Just, yeah. Before you ever went into prison, were you scared with doing what you were doing? Oh, so in terms of like, how though? I, I don't know how you want me to like, what in terms of how to, to, to like break that down. 
because I can tell you about, we were scared, were we scared of prison? Yes. If you were trying to get away from police, if that's what you're saying, yeah, we're yeah. going to do everything we can to get away um, because you don't want to get, who wants that? Um, but there's other risk factors in what you're doing. Yeah. So there's rivalries, there's other so-called gangs, there's all of that. And yeah, you got to be aware of these things. So I wouldn't say scared, but I'd say you're, you're very aware and you just want to make sure you're mindful that you're not in the wrong places at the wrong time. Yeah, definitely. What about for you? For you, I want to know what you thought, like in prison, where your life was going. Cause like, but you're in there, you can think, you know, you've got a lot of time. What, was your process of, okay, how am I going to carry on my life from this moment? What was that like for you? What kind of thinking process did you go through? Um, okay, so it was, it was a, a, a more of a refreshing feeling I had. So before, so I went to prison when I was 20 um, and I was on bail from 19 and before all of that, since I've been like, I don't know, young, uh, 14, 15 or whatever, um, my headspace wasn't right. It wasn't great. I wasn't doing the things I really wanted to do. I was, you know, just headspace, not mentally great. Mm -hmm. So I feel like I was going down, you know, more of a wrong. Slippery slope. Yeah. So prison, it was my turning point. So it was, it, you're right. It gave me all that time. It made me think about, you know, it could have gone two ways. I could have spent the time um, just being more destructive, let's say, and, you know, not doing what's really best for me. Mm -hmm. um, but it was, it was, it was as soon as I went in, that face that I had and that resilience I started building, it was from day one. Um, and like you said about, be being in the cell and you know not have not could not move that was like the the stemming of what I wanted to do and I, I just had to sit down and say what do I want and what do I want to do and where am I going and what am I good at and what do I like and all of these things that I never really sat down with myself and asked me um it it gave me it made me think about all of that so so what did you think your future would be then well I wanted I wanted to be doing good. I wanted to be successful, but I just, I didn't know what in. So I always wanted to get fit in my life. I always wanted to go to the gym, sort out my body, sort out my mindset. And I never could. I never had the motivation. I just, I was just out having fun. I studied um, my level one and two gym instructor and I got my personal trainer inside, which I was then like, this is what I want to do. So this is what I wanted to be when I got out. This, I wanted to be a P uh, I wanted to be a personal trainer. Is this you trying to plug for clients? <laughs> no, I love my clients. I got my clients. Yeah. Um, yeah so we'll talk but, about your clients. Yeah. Just quickly. So like, I remember you saying the other day that like you were telling your clients about what you're doing here. Yeah. So, so what was that like? So the, yeah, this is a big thing about, um, do I talk about being in prison? And when I first came out of prison, I went straight into being a personal trainer and, um, and I didn't tell anybody, didn't tell any of my clients or anything. Whereas there's sometimes I really wanted to be like, well, so some of my clients asked me, what made you, you know, you're so passionate about fitness. What made you be passionate? And I really wanted to turn around and say, well, you know, it stemmed from being inside and I wanted to get fit and I had the time to think for myself and this is what I really wanted to do. And, and I just did, couldn't, and I didn't cause I didn't speak about it, but now all my clients know, and it's such a good feeling being able to talk about how I felt at times and why I'm so passionate about what I do. So, mm. so yeah, this is, it feels great. I've that my clients know, and I can share that with them. Um, another massive reason why I just think talking about things you're going through is so important. Yeah. 100%. Okay, yeah. I want to I want to know how did prison affect your family and your relationship? I also want to know relationship with your mum. What it was like before and what it's like now. Um okay. So so going away at 17 was a shock for the household because 
to be honest, that like they yeah they knew I was on tag, but my, my brother and my sister, my younger brother and my sister, they don't really know what was happening. Um, so then it was just like one day, yeah, he's gone. He's not coming back home. Um, That's so sad. Yeah, it is, but. <laughs> You know, um, but how did that make you feel, like knowing that? Yes, yeah, sad. Okay. You know, you just feel like you let them down because oh. you're like older sibling. Um, uh, but but the good thing is, I think it strengthened like family relationships in the sense that, like, you wouldn't, I wouldn't personally say, "Oh, mum, I love you," or like, "Yeah, bro, man, you're good." Yeah, or you know what I mean. But that made me more open to expressing myself, in the sense that. First time I think I told my mum I loved her as a as an adult. Adult was like on the prison phone. Wow! Like oh yeah, thanks, mum. Love you. You know what I mean. Oh. So that kind of helped. That um, is that because you felt like you missed her? Yeah, or? obviously you miss your you miss your family and you okay. miss your people. So I think uh, expressing that was was um, was was helpful to coping. Does that you make sense? That. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Um, oh, Zach, you're actually mo- making my heart melt. Is it? Yeah. Don't get soppy. I'm I joking. Am. I'm joking. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that kind of, that was good. And in terms of friends, it shows you who your real friends are. Yeah I, yeah, I definitely agree. So you know who really cares and who you didn't know cared. Because mm. some people would pop up randomly like, oh, I thought, thinking about you, wrote yeah. your letter. Here's some money as well. Like, yeah. hope you're all right. So that was good. Obviously, there's distance and time separating you and your family, but I feel like ultimately it made us a bit closer, more expressive, myself anyway. You know? That's really nice to hear that Thanks. you were able to express yeah. those emotions. Yeah, it's so important. Trust me. Um, Don't ever feel what type of way to express. Tell your people oh, you love them. Go on, man. Zach. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah. Tell your people so you love them. So for you. What did it do to affect your family ties and your um, friendships? It's hard question because it's not hard. It's hard to say it because it hurts when you say it because obviously I did affect my family a lot and I didn't see their journey and that's the big thing. But And I admit now and I should admit to them a little bit more. I don't know if it comes up that, you know, they struggled and I didn't see it. So hearing them having struggled I almost I can't hear it um and maybe I shut shut it down a little bit it's just, it's it goes both ways you know like with other people and yourself that you've been through something and you need to express like so so do other people yeah you know I remember someone saying and this is someone that's been to prison as well he made me said that us going away to prison yeah, we going through it, but the people going through it the most mm-hmm. are our family mm-hmm. and our loved ones. But they say and that we about. Don't see, but, but we they don't say, see that. Yeah, but, but they say that about us, us as well. Yes. So they're saying they're, you know, they they've been affected, but it's nothing on what we've been through, whatever. So, you know, it's um, but that's all about like how it is. It's not just one person; it is a community of people. Exactly, kind of. Yes, yeah, not know. just you. It's everyone connected with you. Yeah. So, but you know, right about. It, sh- it you know i've i've got i've got seriously amazing friends and in a seriously amazing family and they've been by my side through the whole process mm-hmm. and you know when this first happened i didn't tell anybody you know so it was a year of me kind of knowing that things were going a bit bad and it could be could get bad so you know the first initial them finding out massive shock but first initial thing they did is support um and you know my friends are just absolutely incredible and they were there you know visited me even when I got shipped to Yorkshire and my family came even though I was in Yorkshire um and that's a long drive that's a for a two-hour visit you know About four hours it's it's is they do it a hundred percent like no questions asked but you know it it even that affects their like, you, you know what you said to me once as well, that, you know, t- touched my heart. What did I say? Um, when, you know, that, oh, was it you? It must have been What, you. go on. When, you know, the, the, you're not there through arrangements, family things, you know, you've got weddings, you've got yeah. um, birthdays yeah. and you're just not there and they go through that. So they're affected from, from the start. So, um, yeah, I... 
I'm I'm that's one thing that I am so 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 sorry for and regret that they had to go through that pain hey. as well. What about you, Zach? What are you how is your life like now? And so in inside I've figured out not figured out, but I just found that there was so much that needed to be to be done to mm. support people and help people. Um to like find something better to do. You know, for lack of a better word, you know, like we could all be doing something better than being in prison, right? So um, that I've had an idea for a business, started the business, and we basically help young people or try to like show them the, da- the dangers of going down that pathway that mm-hmm. can lead to prison. Mm-hmm. And then try to like signpost them to better pathways. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because I mean, it's amazing hearing you say that. Thanks. I want to do... The same. That's what we're trying to do here. That is right? what we're trying to do here. I just wanted to, um, I wanted to ask you one thing before, like, so do you know anyone in prison now? And if you do, do you feel like, you know, you want to help them, but you can't help them? That that kind of feeling, because right. you've been through it yourself. All right. So, so my brother's actually in prison now, my younger brother. Um, and I spoke to him the other day. And we're just talking, talking, talking. And then he was like, oh, you know, so-and-so and so-and-so are back in prison. I was like, boy, it, 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 it just it is what it is now. It's like either something clicks with you and then you're just like, this ain't what I want to do anymore. And then you're going to find something positive or something better to do with your time. Or people just go back to what they know. And I feel like this is part of the reason why we should be doing things like this. And having, you know, Life After Prison podcast, because what is Life After Prison? How can that, how does that look like? What else can someone else be doing? What support is out there? Do you, do you get what I mean? So, feelings are normal and feelings yeah, are okay. Yeah. And these are the, this is part of the, 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 part of the process mm. of Life After Prison is finding something to do, finding that support to get to where you need to go and get your life back on track. You know, so I feel like there's a lot more that needs to be done in that sense. I wanted to ask, so what advice would you give to somebody who's the best piece of advice that you would give to somebody that's just got out of prison Mm. um, or anybody that's, you know, been affected? (sighs) Good question, man. Best piece of advice. Um, I'd say the best piece of advice is, don't be afraid to ask for help and support if you need it. You know, if you're struggling with certain things, it could be whatever it is, there is support out there. There are people that will genuinely try to help you um, and be positive. You know, that being in prison doesn't define you. Your conviction isn't what, who you are. <clears throat> there is life after prison. Um, and it's just about finding what you want to do and going for it. But don't be afraid to ask for support because there are challenges, there's many challenges and it's not easy. It's not like, oh yeah, you come out and then boom, you go into something all great and your life's great. Ideally, that would be the best, but that's not realistic. So understand that there will be challenges. Um, There will be some things that are difficult, but look for the support um, and be as positive as possible. Talk, Talk. express yourself. I was just about to say, yeah. What do you think? What, um, what do you and think? You, listen, you've just covered loads. Like everything you said is amazing, but yeah, talk. Um, and if there's nobody to talk to, because I get that, then there are there are ways. Um, but don't feel like you have to keep that in um, and deal with all of this on your own. And don't and I w- and this is another reason why we're doing it. But to feel like you can relate to people because there are other people out there that are going through something something the same, something similar. Um, and, and yeah, just to feel like you're not in this world on your own. Cause that is, oh, that is like the hardest thing to think that nobody understands. Um, and also, you know, there's things that me and you are both, so find something, find the things that you love doing. You know, there's things that me and you are doing off podcast that we love doing and that we're super excited about enjoying. Um, as well as this. So find things that you really love to do and really love to enjoy. I like that. In terms of organisations, there are loads out there that can support you with your journey 
of life after prison, such as Nacro and Unlock. But there also is the Clint's directory, which you can use to find organisations that are local to you to support you with the needs that you have. And the links to these organisations will be in the show notes and in the description. But you can also find more information about organisations that can support you through our other show, Getting Out, which you can find also in the programme description. And we also really want you guys to get in touch. We want to hear how it's been for you since you've come out of prison and what your life is like. Or if you want to get in touch with us for any other reason, then please do. So you can do this by DMing us on Instagram or Twitter at After Prison Pod or email us on podcast at prison.radio or you can even write to us at Life After Prison. National Prison Radio, HMP Brixton, London, SW2 5XF. And also, like and subscribe. Yeah. Please do. It helps a lot of other people find the podcast and we want to reach as many people as possible. Definitely. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for, thanks for listening. Yeah, thanks for listening. Yeah.